What's going on everybody? Cody from Motorcycle MD. Tonight's goal is to break that barrier that you may have when it comes to testing switches on your motorcycle. Maybe your bike won't start, maybe the starter button's acting funky, turn signal switch, headlight, kill switch, whatever the case may be, you will understand switches tonight, I can guarantee it, and it'll help you diagnose problems quickly and effectively and making sure that you buy the right parts when you need them and you save the money when you don't. I will not be working on an actual bike. What I decided to do is take the controls off of a bike, lay them out so we can really understand what's going on and what it is we're actually testing. Now, switches vary from bike to bike, but regardless of any motorcycle out there, the fundamentals of testing that switch will be the same. That's what's so cool about this. Yes, wiring colors may be different. That will be up to you to decide exactly which wires feed that switch with the use of a wiring schematic, but I have some basic, basic knowledge that will help you identify it, even if you don't have one. Certain bikes function a little bit differently. For instance, the switches we'll be using tonight are from a VT750 Shadow. The way that they use their starter button and kill switch paired is a little bit different from what you would say an XR650L or a Nighthawk 750. This bike allows you to turn the motor through with the kill switch off. VT750 Shadow does not. The goal and the purpose of the starter switch and the kill switches are the same. I'll explain more as I go. Enough talking about it. Let's test some switches. Hey, it's time to get on the learning carpet. Oh, I don't know if I can do this. Oh, man. I haven't sat Indian style in a very long time. Let's not do that. Ugh. This is the switch assembly that we will be using, okay? Basic kill switch, basic starter switch. Yet, it has so many wires. Well, they're functioning a bunch of different stuff. Okay, you got headlight action going on. You have running light action going on when it comes to your turn signals. So there's a bunch of stuff going on, but regardless, we're gonna isolate just the switch as if it looked like this on off and test out and make sure it's working. Now, to break this down into layman terms, a switch, its main purpose is to turn on and off a load. The light would be a load. So let's say here's our circuit here. Here's our switch, on, off, very easy. Inside of this circuit, connecting one ground wire and a power wire would give us our load. Yes, you would have a battery in there and stuff like that, but the switch's main purpose is to take these two wires and connect them. Disconnect, connect. Disconnect, connect. Disconnect, connect disconnect, connect. Regardless if it's on, off, push, pull, left, right, its goal is to connect two wires together to complete the circuit. Now with that knowledge in your brain, let's test the switch out. This is a brake switch, okay? This usually mounts right underneath the master cylinder. Your brake lever has a little arm on it that hangs off and it depresses this button all the time until you go to pull the brake lever in and it will release the button. And once you release the brake lever, it will push that button right back in again. So I'm not sure if this switch works or not, but let's test it out. What I'm gonna use is of course a micrometer, a multimeter, which is what you would need to do to do any kind of electrical testing. But we're gonna use it in two different ways. One way is an option that comes with this meter, which would be a continuity test. The other way would be as if you did not have the feature that this have and you just want to test continuity with straight up resistance. It's the same exact thing. Continuity is making sure that there is a connection from here to here in one wire. Okay? I don't care how big your schematic looks, what it's doing, where it's going. Continuity is to see if there's a connection from here to here on one end of the wire to the other. That's all continuity is. Resistance is testing to make sure that there is no obstruction between this end and this end in this wire. So because resistance is still checking from this end to this end, it can be used as a continuity check as well. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna set my meter to resistance. This is an auto-ranging meter. 
okay so it auto automatically ranges for me if you have a a meter that's probably not as expensive as this one the width is not a problem at all they may have different ranges 10 ohms of resistance 10k 20k 40k you can just go ahead and set it to 10 ohms or 5 ohms or 100 ohms that's the range you want to get in you're not testing anything outside of 100 ohms my meter reads ol which means that the path from here to here is way too far and is way too great for it to even pick it up your meter may just have a zero which is fine it's saying that there is no resistance from here to here or it's open from here to here so think of the zero as an o i guess is the best way to put it okay o is an open these two things that's when it's connecting that's when it's open okay here's our switch okay normally it's constantly closed and i have some alligator clips for the sake of testing it doesn't matter which way you go it really does not matter it's either going to show you a negative or a non-negative it's the same exact reading okay and you're not going to electrocute yourself with your meter i promise you so button is not depressed this is giving me a reading it's an averagely high reading 1.5 that's not too bad let's push the button in oh well off OL, it says, hey, there's a connection from this terminal to this terminal inside the switch. Basic, basic knowledge, okay? This button, all it's doing is connecting these two wires together. That's its goal. Now, one thing to keep in mind, a rule of thumb when it comes to resistance in a wire, typically, you won't have more than one ohm of resistance in a wire. Here's a wire right here. Let's hook it up in resistance. This is showing me 0 0.1, 0 0.3 ohms of resistance. If you're having, if I had two ohms of resistance or three or four or five and it keeps raising up, there's obviously some kind of bad connection from here to here. Some there's a break in the wire, bad connection right here, whatever the case may be. So knowing that, wires typically add eh, zero ohms up to even 0 0.8, 0 0.9 I've seen that aren't too big of a deal but that's what the normal reading is. A switch will add a little bit more resistance. If I press in real good on, on the connection, it's showing me that there's a little bit high of a resistance, 2.7 ohms. Probably there's a dirty contact inside or whatever the case may be. Certain switches or certain signals or certain electrical components will have a very high resistance because they're made to have that kind of resistance. But we're talking about switches, open and close. That's all we're talking about. See, now, now it's reading 0.7. When I press the button, it's cutting the signal. Remember that that button is in when the brake lever is not being used. So, let's test some switches on the control. In, in order to understand what I'm testing, there's two things you can do. Open the schematic and check it out, or open the switch and have a look for yourself. But, even if you open this up, you see a bunch of different wires going into that switch. Well, you still need to know which one's doing what. But on this end, the kill switch, there's only two wires it's being used. Okay, it's a black and white wire that I can see down here, and a black with, let's say, a black and green or black and grayish wire. So this kill switch is only using two wires, so how would I test it? Same way. Black with white wire is this one, black with gray wire is this one. I'm going to test the switch to make sure that they are connecting it. So let's go on the end of where it comes out at. I'm going to connect one end to the black with white because I know that that wire was going to that switch. Right now the kill switch is off in the off position. And the other wire was that black and green wire or black and gray, whatever it is. It looks like it's directly beside this one. So the kill switch is off right now. I got an OL reading. Let's turn it on. Hey -o! See that? very low resistance to the switch it's it's a very clean switch it's, a, it's actually brand new let's let's cut it back off again same exact wires i get nothing which is exactly how the switch operates now when it comes to starter buttons and kill switches you got to use common sense what is the purpose of the switch okay for most bikes most hondas the kill switch cuts power to the coils it cuts ignition that's the kill switch's goal to cut power, it does not cut the headlight, it does not cut 
the brake light system, it's not cutting any of that. The kill switch's goal is to cut power to the coils. Starter button may do a couple different things. A lot of the Hondas, what they do is they use the starter switch to actually cut power to the headlight to allow for more voltage to be used in the electrical system. Go to the coils, go to the starter solenoid, go to the starter. It's a pretty intelligent design. Cut power here to give it somewhere else. So for this switch in particular, looking at the schematic, here I find the engine stop and starter switch, okay, which is what we're testing. If you look at this wiring schematic, it says that we have power for a headlight, which right here, this little symbol in here, is saying that the headlight's actually giving the starter button power. Okay, it's, it's, it's always on that starter button. When I apply the starter button, that's when it sends power through the system. But what I'm looking for is what wires to actually test. So if you look at the switch, the actual switch itself, it has a it has two wires for it. It has a black with white and a yellow with red. The black with white is also being used over on this engine stop switch because it says engine stop is pertaining to this first block, starter switch pertaining to the second block, and divided by this line there. Okay, so engine stop switch is also using that same black with white wire. Starter switch's button is to send power to the starter solenoid which is on this schematic right here. Starter relay, starter magnetic switch, whatever you want to call it. Send power to the starter relay, tell it to make a connection. That's all a starter relay does is make a connection so that battery power can be sent through the solenoid into the starter and room, room you go. So knowing that, the starter switch has a yellow, red, and a black with white wire. Let's test those out. Knowing where it goes is what helps you isolate what wires to test. If I have a blue with white wire coming from the starter switch harness and it goes to a headlight, that's actually not the job of that switch. It may involve that, that circuit, but the starter's main goal is to send power to the starter relay and make sure that it has a ground elsewhere. Let's put our meter on resistance again, and we're going to test the yellow red with black and white wire. Right now, I have OL. The switch is not being used. Push the switch in. What do you know? I now have a reading. It's going to be jumping around because I'm not making a very good connection. But regardless, off, I have nothing. On, I have at least something. On this meter in particular, I actually have a continuity mode. All it does is beep at me when it says, hey, there's actually a connection from there to there. So, switch not pressed in switch pressed in, switch not pressed in, switch pressed in. So the starter switch is working. You have a starter switch that may sometimes be working, sometimes not. There's probably a chance that there is some high resistance in that starter switch, okay? The reading I'm getting is about one ohm of resistance. If you have a dirty starter switch, you may be getting way higher than that. Maybe sometimes it will read resistance, sometimes it won't. Could have a broken wire down here at the switch. Could just be dirty terminals inside of that switch. One thing that I will also want to check for with this one in particular, because on this switch, the starter button won't work unless the kill switch is on. Okay, on some bikes with the kill switch off, the starter button still works. It's okay, it's just bypassing it. Which we'll actually touch on that in here, here in a minute bypassing switches. So what I can do is since this since this switch assembly, like we saw in the schematic, they both use the black and white wire for both the kill switch and the starter switch. Remember when we tested the kill switch, the black with white wire and the black with green wire. Off, it was open, oh well. On, it had resistance, it had continuity. So with that on, that black and white wire, that the black and green wire are making a connection. So, what I should be able to do, since the starter button uses the yellow with red and the black with white, because that kill switch is making a path of the black with white and the black with green, I should be able to test the yellow red wire of the starter switch and the black green wire of the kill switch. It's making a complete circle, right? Let's test it out. This is to make sure that the kill switch is actually telling the starter switch that, hey, it's okay to go ahead and fire. I'm actually a little bit colorblind, so I can get these mixed up, mixed up pretty easily. 
I actually don't know how I really survive in this world, but I manage. Black with green, yellow with red. Kill switch is on, so it's making that connection of those two wires. Starter button is not depressed. Check out the meter. It's open. Now, let's see if I can do this with holding, testing it again with the button pressed. Aha! It's making a connection through the kill switch. It's giving me, let's see, 0.7 ohms of resistance, which is a fantastic switch. Again, this is a brand new switch. I wouldn't imagine it for it not to do that. Now, that's a bunch of information. Hopefully it made sense. But what the wiring diagram will show you is that the starter button relies on a couple of different things. Okay, We call these safety switches. Clutch switch on some bikes. Some bikes won't start without, without, without the clutch pulled in, even in neutral. Um, neutral switches, just to make sure that you just can't start your bike and take off with a kickstand down or while you're in gear without knowing something in your mind having to physically do something to change that switch to allow it to start. Like if you were in gear with the kickstand up, pulling the clutch in, in gear and starting it, they'll say, okay, he should be aware that he's holding that clutch in. I'll go ahead and start. Trust me, you do not want to ride a bike with the kickstand down and make a left-hand turn. But what if you have no spark? What if the starter button's not working but you've tested it and it's fine? What if it's one of those switches that may be bad? Well, you can jump it. Very, very basic knowledge. Just with me telling you that first sentence before we even got started should tell you exactly how to get that done. Regardless, let's do it now. So here we have a battery, known good battery. Here we have a brake light off of a Honda Grom. And it has three wires, a ground wire, low beam, and a high beam for the brake light. One's a running light, one's a brake light. That's all it is, three wires. And here we have a switch on off. Okay, the side of the switch or the side of a relay, whatever you're using, should tell you exactly what the switch does. This is act, these two prongs here are actually the control part of the switch. It shows me that with a little diagram right inside of there. Up on this side, it actually says neon lamp or whatever load you're going to take. Now remember, every circuit will need some kind of load, otherwise you have a short to ground. It's as if I'm taking this wire and going straight to that. See that's, see how it arcs? It's because it has a short to ground. That's exactly what a short to ground is. The battery needs to go from here into a load and then back to that negative or the ground in order for it to work properly. Otherwise, you will burn and melt this wire, which is why they have fuses in line so that if anything were to happen with the load, or with the wiring in between and it shorts itself to ground, it will blow the fuse and not melt the wire. That's the purpose of a fuse. A light, a horn, um, an indicator lamp, a fuel pump, a starter. Those are all loads for it to take that amperage that you're giving it. So let's go ahead and hook it all up. On off switch, negative positive. Okay, so all I'm gonna do is make a circle in the power. Here's our ground. Let's go ahead and ground our ground wire. All I've done is just continue the circuit. Here's the ground going into here. Let's take our power and go here. Our switch. Okay? Not on the load side, but on the switch side of that switch. Now let's take this wire and go to the power side of the switch and to the load side of this switch. Now I have a light that operates. Let's check this one. Now, as you see, this switch, this switch actually lights up. It's actually robbing power of this light because it has two lights in the exact same circuit. Because this light has a switch, they offer the second option of not having that light on the switch, which gives me more power to here. Check that out. There's our brake light. There's our low beam running light. Let's hook it up to this one because it looks awesome. Turn the switch off. So this switch is obviously working. Remember, 
all it's doing is just connecting these two wires. So if I wanted to take this switch out of the question, let's say it, it's a clutch switch. Let's say it's a kickstand switch. Whatever the case may be, I'm gonna take it out of that circuit. So all I have to do is remove it, take a wire, and put them together. Amazing, right? I literally just took the switch out of the problem. Let's say it's a bad neutral switch. If I take the switch out of the question and just make a jumper wire from there to there, keeping the load in the circuit, we're doing the exact same thing. That's how you would jump a switch, to take it completely out of the question. Obviously, it's important to read your schematic to make sure that what you're doing will actually benefit you when you're diagnosing something like with the starter switch. You don't want to start touching the wrong wires and then melt something. So do that at your own risk. Make sure you know which wires you're exactly touching. But that's it. I mean, I know it's a lot of information and it can be very confusing or maybe even a little bit overwhelming, but if you break it down into a two wire system, the switch operates for two wires for its sole purpose as to why you're not getting, maybe the headlight's not working, maybe the turn signal's not working, maybe the horn's not working. But if you understand what the switch is doing and what it's not doing, like the starter button switch, the main purpose for starting the bike is to hit power to the starter relay. Let's test the wires in that switch. Boom. Just knock it down in something you can actually understand. And try not to get too wrapped up in what the meter is saying as far as numbers and say, oh, well, mine's reading 0.276. What the hell does that mean? Unless there is an actual specification that Han is giving you, as well as common knowledge saying that a wire shouldn't have more than an ohm or two in the system, that kind of knowledge I understand if you didn't know that right offhand. Let me know below in the comments if that even made sense to you. Maybe I even just overcomplicated it. I can actually confuse myself when I'm going over terms and words and situations. I try to take overcomplicated subjects, break them down to something you can understand as well as so I can understand it. That's how I operate. Be sure to subscribe to my email list. I have a huge announcement coming up within this month and I want you to be a part of it. So be sure to go over to MotorcycleMD.com and join the mailing list. You'll also get a free troubleshooting cheat sheet that I designed for you if you're troubleshooting your bike. It's super helpful. It's helped a lot of people out. Be sure to follow me on Instagram and Facebook. And if you want to learn more about motorcycles and your Honda in particular, subscribe here. This channel is designed around Honda motorcycles as I am a Honda professional technician. Tangible information that you can understand and bring home to your mama. But as always, Cody from Motorcycle MD, bringing you guys quality tips and tricks for your next build or your daily wire. Or your daily wire. Wow. Or your daily rider. See you guys next time. Peace.